there's not a single virus in existence that has been tested in any way in the test tube or in the body or in the animal that vitamin C has not been completely effective in eradicating. Thank you for joining us here today on the Gut Health Reset Podcast. My name is Dr. Anne-Marie Barter, and I am going to be your host today. And I am such a big fan of this doc. He's written so many inspiring books, um, and he has done a ton of research that actually direct a lot of folks care today. And so anyway, I am just super excited to be interviewing him. His name is Dr. Levy. He is a board certified cardiologist and a bar certified attorney. After practicing adult cardiology for 15 years, he began to research the enormous toxicity associated with much of dental work as well as the pronounced ability to properly administer vitamin C to neutralize this toxicity. He's now written 13 books with several addressing the wide ranging properties of vitamin C and neutralizing all toxins and resolving most infections, as well as its vital role in the effective treatment of heart disease and cancer. Others address the important roles of dental toxicity and nutrition in disease and health. Recently inducted into the Orthomolecular Medicine Hall of Fame in 2016, Dr. Levy continues to research the impact of the orthomolecular application of vitamin C and antioxidants uh, in general on chronic degenerative diseases. His ongoing research involves documenting that all diseases are different forms and degrees of focal scurvy arising from increased oxidative stress, especially intercellularly, and that they all benefit from protocols that optimize the antioxidant levels in the body. Dr. Olivi just completed his latest book, Rapid Virus Recovery, No Need to Live in Fear, that he has been giving away for free to all online um, to offer an easy, cheap answer to COVID. And we'll put those links below. Dr. Levy, I am so excited to have you on the podcast today. Like we were talking before the show, I am such a big fan of yours. And I think that you do incredible work. You've put out some incredible books with very, very usable information. And so I want to just dig into how you got so passionate about vitamin C and treating some of these pathogens that you've researched pretty heavily? Well, the vitamin C all started with Dr. Huggins, Hal Huggins back in 1993, who I consider probably to be the first true biological dentist to practice dentistry with orthomolecular medicine principles. And to make a long story short, he invited me to his clinic one day in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and I saw incredibly sick patients, really sick patients, a wheelchair, a lot of advanced neurologic disease. And I saw some of these patients getting incredibly intense dental therapy, extractions, cavitations uh, for, for hours. And when it was all over, they were feeling great. I, I, this is the type of thing that puts a college graduate to bed for a week, you know, and these old frail patients were feeling fantastic. And I said, Hal, something doesn't fit here. I said, how is it possible these people are so energized and charged after three hours of the most rigorous demanding dental work I've ever seen in my life? And Hal, if you ever knew anything about him, was let's say a sarcastic fellow to be the least, which I love. I'm very sarcastic myself. And he's just pointed at the IV bag. I said, okay, Hal, they're getting an IV. That doesn't mean a whole lot. He said, well, it's what's in the IV. I said, okay, I'll bite. What's in the IV, Hal? And he said, 50 grams of vitamin C. And that just came out of left field for me. I mean, I had no idea what that meant, but I did know one thing. I had to believe my eyes weren't lying to me. I was seeing patients rapidly respond. And so at that point in time, I decided, well, you have to start researching vitamin C and figure out why all this happened. And that from that day on began my odyssey 
with not only vitamin C, but with all the things that relate to vitamin C that uh, cause diseases, all diseases, all diseases are caused by toxins and prooxidants. And the primary cause of those prooxidants and toxins are chronic infections. Some of them overt, and some of them, as we might talk about later, low grade, what I call chronic pathogen colonization in the airways, nose, and throat, and sinuses. These keep us sick in incredibly different ways. And when the pathogens can be accessed, something like vitamin C can mitigate them and often resolve them. Uh, resolve acute sy syndrome is no problem at all and mitigate chronic syndromes. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And you, I, I'm going to get into, you know, the lower grade pathogens in just a second, but you have some incredible research on, um, on diseases like polio or Ebola, where with high, high dose vitamin C through an IV, you guys can mitigate some of these acute, acute infections. Is that correct? Uh, yes, uh, the polio information was reported on back in 1949. The work was done in 1948 by Dr. Frederick Plenner. And to make a long story short, he took 60 young polio patients and giving them a combination of <clears throat> oral and injectable vitamin C, multigram. He cured 57 out of 60 in three days, and the remaining three, he needed two additional days. And like, what did I say about sarcasm in Dr. Huggins? 60 out of 60 is pretty doggone close to 100%, right? Uh, and really, vitamin C does that for any acute virus. Chronic viruses, that's a different story. They hide in different areas of the body. But for acute viral uh, infections, acute viral illnesses, uh, vitamin C, along with some things we might talk about like hydrogen peroxide, which vitamin C works with in your body, uh, viruses don't stand a chance. And I say that fully aware that the audience is saying, hey, wait, we're in the middle of a COVID epidemic and you're saying viruses present no problem to this. And yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Great. Then let's, let's, you just kind of went to my next talking point there. Um, so first, the first thing is, you know, you're talking about grams of vitamin C, not milligrams, but grams of vitamin C. So I can, I can kind of hear people out there like, well, can I take 50 grams of vitamin C and, and, and this really to that level, if you're treating something that acute, it really needs to be administered in an IV bag. There's just, you, you just cannot probably get that much vitamin C orally. I wouldn't be able to. <laughs> well, it also has to do with the delivery system. Yes, the track record is there for IV vitamin C in the uh, multigram doses. But we also, and I've worked with this for whew, 15 years now, over 15 years. Uh, when you have a quality liposome encapsulated vitamin C, and I say quality because there's very few out there, okay? I've only worked with one company uh, and I haven't found anybody else that has a comparable product, but taking one fifth the dose of liposome encapsulated vitamin C orally actually delivers more vitamin C inside the cells than five times as much intravenously. That's not to say you take one rather than the other. If you have access, you take both, okay? But because of the fact that liposomes can deliver their payload literally through the cell membranes inside the cell without the consumption of energy. That's what makes it so valuable because even vi IV vitamin C circulating in the blood, <clears throat> but not encapsulated in liposomes needs to consume energy to get inside the cell. So it's like robbing Peter to pay Paul. You gotta, you gotta pay the price, you gotta use energy to get an energy supplying substance from point A to point B. With liposomes, you skip the energy consumption and just get it directly inside the cell. Well, let's, let's move into some of the more chronic infections. So one of the big things that I just stand on the rooftops, and if I could scream, I would, is you know, gut and dental infections. And, you know, we've got cavitations, 
which most people seem to think are cavities. And so we have cavitations from primarily wisdom tooth removal, and then we have root canals. How do these things in our mouth have any impact on our gut health? And, and what can we do about this? Okay. Well, rather than give the public a lot of stuff that they have a difficult time remembering, if they remember my email address and say, I want the two books you were talking about, I'll give links to two free eBooks. The, the email address is T-E-L-E-V-Y-M-D, T-E-L-E-V-Y-M-D at yahoo.com. So send me a note, I'll send you the books, and it'll give a lot more detail about what we're going to talk about uh, right now. Number one is, and this is covered in the one book that uh, actually I have now have 110,000 downloads around the world. Okay. But that's because I'm giving it away. I wouldn't have made 110,000 sales. But that's okay. Uh, we're all going to suffer in horrible ways if we don't stop the pandemic. And this will stop the pandemic. I'll just make it short and say I now have feedback from my sources in Columbia, South America, that they took 20 COVID patients advanced, already having severe shortness of breath. Well, when you're having severe shortness of breath, you're very close to dying, period. And in 20 out of 20, they gave hydrogen peroxide nebulization 3% for half an hour, three times a day for five days. And they cured all 100. Uh, excuse me, 100%. They cured all 20. So, and this is covered in a newsletter that was sent to the Orthomolecular Medicine News Service. It was just published on Monday. This is important not only because of what it does for COVID, but the thing is, and we're going to segue into an entirely different area. I wrote the book on hydrogen peroxide nebulization primarily because we're in the middle of a pandemic and I wanted to end the pandemic and I gave it away and it's still giving it away. But in the process of doing this, I just absolutely stumbled into some whole different new concepts, which is, the concept is chronic pathogen colonization. Not an acute infection, not an abscess, but just a generalized growth of pathogens in different areas of your nose, throat, covered by biofilms. And what do you do when something slowly grows in the area where you swallow? You swallow pathogens and toxins all day long. I mentioned earlier, all disease, 100% of all disease is caused by oxidative stress in excess of the antioxidant counterattack you can give to that. And the reason most chronic diseases won't resolve with powerful antioxidant intake, make them better, but not resolve, is because you never identify and stop the chronic pathogen colonization that's feeding new oxidative stress into given tissues and in this case, into the gut. Now, many times people that start, myself included, started the hydrogen peroxide nebulization for other reasons, found in a day or two, start having the most incredible normal formed bowel movements of their life, okay? You don't form a perfectly normal bowel movement with an abnormal gut. That also brings home the point as to how <clears throat> readily resolvable many gut problems are. We have a whole host of different things. Go to the drugstore, you see a million and one different digestion, diarrhea, constipation. I mean, a ton of stuff. And, you know, if you have one of those conditions, it helps some. But a lot of people labor under the delusion that because they've had something for 15 years, there's no way to resolve it. Well, you've had something for most people in the case of the gut for 15 years, because you swallow toxins and pathogens every day, every day, every day, every day. As it turns out, there's also the gut bugs, abnormal, cause inflammation, cause leaky gut. Leaky gut is where it becomes porous between the intestinal cells. Well, guess what? The intestinal cells replicate very, very, very rapidly. So if you stop the toxin 
influx almost completely, guess what? Your leaky gut disappears in a couple days. This is why you get a normal bowel movement in a couple days. I've already had multiple people with 10, 15 years of irritable bowel syndrome completely resolved in a few days to a week doing hydrogen peroxide nebulization, nothing else. Not that there aren't other things you can do, but this is not only the primary monotherapy for dealing with COVID or any other respiratory virus, it's also the primary monotherapy for normalizing your gut. And of course, what else happens when you resolve leaky gut? You stop poisoning your entire body. Leaky gut in an abnormal microbiome makes all diseases worse, causes some diseases, but makes all diseases worse. I mean, I, I had people writing me that say, well, Dr. Levy, I started uh, the hydrogen peroxide nebulization, and in a couple of days, the pain in my leg went away. What's going? Well, what can I say? We're all interconnected. We seem to think that just because something is three feet away from one spot in your body to another spot in your body, that they're never going to interact, but that they have no interrelationship. Well, that's just not the case. <clears throat> now, in the case then, going to the dental, big subject, and we won't be able to do it justice, but the book that I talked about, that if people want to write to my email, I'll give them, <clears throat> is that especially by the time you're an adult, and especially by the time you're in your 50s, there's nobody, in my humble opinion, that doesn't have significant dental toxicity. Some have horrible, some have minimal. A good start is never to get a root canal. Okay, root canals are 100% infected. Some people contain that infection better than others, have perfect thyroid function, and those toxins, for a number of different reasons, I don't have time to go into, will stay put. That's the tiny minority. The rest of the time, every time you chew on a root canal treated tooth that always has some degree of abscess at the root tips, what are you doing? You have a perfect, you have a better delivery system of toxins into your body than if you gave it IV push because you squeeze it into two places. You squeeze it into the venous blood and you squeeze it into the lymphatics. And this is the reason for the vast majority, not 100%, the vast majority of women in breast cancer. Anybody, any physician, medical person who treats a breast cancer patient and doesn't evaluate their mouth is committing the highest form of malpractice. Okay, it's that simple, all right. Just as anybody with a heart attack, the cardiologist that doesn't evaluate the mouth, same thing. In one study where they did a atherectomy on heart, dis heart disease patients where they actually scrape out the plaque and angiogram and then examine the plaque. And they examined the plaque with PCR testing for pathogens. Well, two things, they did 38 patients they found over 50 different pathogens, nearly all of them oral, and they found it in 38 out of 38 patients. Again, pretty close to 100%. You don't, I mean, for all intents and purposes, I mean, if you want to search for days to find the one exception, feel free. But for all intents and purposes, you will never have a heart attack with a clean mouth just won't happen. The only reason you have the heart attack is because the pathogens come from these infected teeth, infected tonsils, infected gums, venous system, into the arterial system, into the carotid artery with the first big systolic contraction with a lot of pressure. And then those pathogens colonize in the coronary arteries. And what do pathogens do? They consume antioxidants. So, you literally put the artery into a state of arterial scurvy, knock the vitamin C levels down to zero, and then you know what happens. <clears throat> the primary stimulus for the immune system to go anywhere in the body is inflammation caused by antioxidant, aka vitamin C deficiency or absence. And what's the first cell to show up? The monocyte. 
And what does the monocyte have? The monocyte has 80 fold, 8,000% more vitamin C than the surrounding blood. So literally your immune system, in my opinion, because of the facts that I just told you, your immune system is actually a delivery system for antioxidants in the areas that they're most depleted. If you put the whole immune system in a nutshell, I'm telling you, that's the primary role of the immune system is to restore and defeat oxidative stress by bringing antioxidants to the site of infection slash inflammation. So you have all these things. And when you temporarily sterilize the throat and allow a normal flora to grow back in, all varieties of problems start disappearing. Now, there's a lot of different detail on how you do that. That's a little bit beyond what we're talking about here, but that's the interconnection. Amazing. You know, it's really interesting that you bring up the point about PCR testing and what you found in the arterials. Um, I've, I've thought that, but when I've, I've tried to find out and ask people about that, because we I've had rickettsia that was, um, about, I thought 30 could be associated with about a 30% blockage and did high dose vitamin C and some other things that were very antiviral. Um, and most people say, no, we don't, we don't think that that's what's in the arterials. We don't think that that's what's clogging. But when we did another scan, it was completely gone after the treatment within a month and a half. So well, might, might I add, what a stupid thing to say. We don't think. Who cares what you think? What, what, what matters is checking it. What matters is looking at data, okay? When, if you look at somebody and say, well, I don't think this is present in their artery, what a silly statement. Mm -hmm. do, do you have a, a psychic ability that some other <laughs> physician doesn't have? You know, so. Totally. No, so that really validates what I've seen clinically, but could not really explain. And let me tell you something else too. On... And there's a lot of data behind all of this. So you have heart disease, you go with high dose antioxidants in a limited number of patients, you'll stabilize and start to reverse the atherosclerosis, literally bring the narrowings down. But if you add eliminating the root canals and the chronically infected teeth, you have many people have abscessed teeth that are absolutely pain-free, but you need a 3D cone beam examination to determine that. When those teeth are gone and the tonsils have been injected with ozone to clear up all the infection that's accumulated in them from all these infected teeth, and you take care of any sinus problems. In other words, you take care of the seeding sources of viruses, bacteria, protozoa, fungi. Then you give high dose antioxidants. You will reliably across the board resolve atherosclerosis completely nearly all of the time. So I just want to make sure. So you are about, um, you're basically about nebulized hydrogen peroxide, high dose vitamin C, but also removing the infections that are actually in the dental canal um, versus doing just ozone therapy on them. Is that correct? Right. I mean, uh, you're never going to, an infected tooth it's also a dead tooth, okay? And you can never mobilize the immune system. And even if you did perfect injections of ozone, which is a phenomenal antipathogen agent, make no doubt about it. I'm very pro-ozone in all, <clears throat> dealing with all infections, but even if for the sake of argument, and I don't think you could do it, but even if for the sake of argument, you could completely sterilize the tooth. The tooth is dead. It no longer has natural fluid flow. And when it first becomes infected, the fluid flow that naturally flushes the tooth out into the mouth, that fluid flow reverses and starts coming back into the tooth. So if you put a dead tooth, a sterile, have a sterile dead tooth in your mouth, it'll be se severely affected again in a few days to a few weeks. So there's no way to resolve infections in the mouth, uh, at least in the case of the teeth, without extraction. I mean, maybe someday they'll modify stem cell therapies and they'll start regenerating new teeth. We're not there now. And at the state of the art of medicine, right now, the only way to 
stop the burden of infection and toxins from a, an infected tooth going to the rest of your body is by removing, properly removing the tooth, because as you alluded earlier, if you don't properly clean out the site, you end up with a cavitation, which is another problem, generally not as bad as the infected tooth, but potentially as bad as the infected tooth. Now, the other thing that's very critical in the context of what we're talking about is anyone who's had a root canal, has a root canal or used to have it and had it extracted or an asymptomatic infected tooth, all of the tonsils in those patients are chronically infected and abscessed, even though they appear normal externally. Now we're not talking about a typical kid's tonsillitis with the big puffed up tonsils. We're talking about the pathogens and toxins seeding the tonsils internally, okay? Now, ozone injections help the kids with tonsillitis too, dramatically. There's really no need for ever having a tonsillectomy again if you have a dentist who's willing to do ozone injections in the tonsils. Cures them and purifies them incredibly rapidly. But the tonsils are one of the primary seeders of the pathogens and toxins, at least that cause heart attacks. And this was determined many years ago by a incredible physician by the name of Dr. Joseph Issels, who treated advanced cancer patients, all of who had infected teeth. And he had a special protocol. A lot of them started getting better, but <clears throat> 20 to 30% of them would die suddenly of heart attacks. And through his own brilliance, he somehow figured out that this was in the tonsils. And as drastic as it sounds, he started doing tonsillectomies on all of his advanced cancer patients and then there were no more heart attacks. Also, and this is his words, not mine, 100% of the normal appearing toxins, uh, normal appearing tonsils that he extracted, had, had cut out of these people's mouths that had a lot of infection in the mouths, 100% normal appearing were all severely abscessed, okay? Now he didn't have that in his this in his day, but it turns out, fortunate for us, if you're going to follow any of this advice, is getting a series of ozone injections directly to the tonsils nearly clears up all of this. So I, I discovered this too late. I almost had a heart attack eight years ago. CRP was elevated. I knew about Dr. Issel's work. I said, I'm not going to die with these tonsils in my head. Next day I went and got a tonsillectomy. And the ENT doctor said, well, that's kind of crazy, Tom. I said, what? He said, well, after the surgery. He said, when I went to grab that left tonsil, which is the tonsil that my root canal had been on 10 years earlier, it had been extracted for 10 years. He said, when I started to pull on that tonsil, pus started coming out. Point being is that was done 10 years earlier, it's taken out. The tonsils cannot clean themselves up. Once you overwhelm them and let them become chronically infected, they become a focal source of infection and they stop becoming a protector against it. Is this just in root canals, but cavitations as well? Is it in both subsets where you actually need to either A, remove the tonsils or B, get ozone injections? Yes, for all of that. I mean, okay. the tonsils are definitely draining the... Uh, the jaw that has extensive cavitations. You know, it's very interesting because so many dentists still aren't aware of these chronic dental issues. And they still think cavitations don't exist, even though you can show them videos that demonstrates that it's just not a fiction. Um, people that have dentures that had a lot of infected teeth when they get all the teeth taken out, they end up with a reduced, uh, all it increased all cause mortality rather than reduced. In other words, taking out all the infected teeth actually makes them worse. And this is because the people that get all their teeth taken out have huge channels of cavitations in those teeth. So until that gets addressed, you're not escaping dental toxicity. So it's, uh, and this has to be recognized, okay? And it's still not recognized. You literally blew my mind with that. 
all the rest of it, I'm pretty, <laughs> pretty solid on. That is amazing. I had no idea on so the dentures. So any elderly patient that you have that's got full dentures and you're dealing with problems, don't think there's no dental issues. You need to get a good biological dentist and you need to clean out, I call them channel cavitations because there's so many of them, they just connect one to the other. It's just, it's just like an infected river in the wow. jawbone. Amazing. Uh, amazing. I'll just, I'll just say, you know, I had a cavitation after my wisdom teeth were removed and I had so many gut problems. I went here, there, everywhere. Yes. You know, you know, the story, right? Like, you know, like everybody. And I had a huge hole in my jaw, huge hole in my jaw. And that was causing all my gut issues. I started to get elevated thyroid levels. When I started treating it and fixing it, guess what? Thyroid antibodies went back to normal. IBS fixed, like ta-da. It's just amazing. All coming from my mouth. All a coming lot of from times we forget what is close to the mouth in these infections. Uh, in addition to say, I talked about the breast draining the lymph, right? and you can do thermography and you can see the red lines going from these infected teeth right into the breast, okay? In addition to that, it doesn't seem to occur to a lot of people that there's something else sitting right underneath all this dental toxicity. It's the thyroid gland. Okay. Thyroid issues follow dental issues, period. A hundred percent agree. And I'll tell you, just in my practice, when I run a GI map, I can see mouth bacteria elevated or even below the elevated area. And I would say 90% of patients, unless, unless they haven't had any dental work at all, those are the only patients I don't see it elevated in. It's just, it's, it's bananas. It's amazing. So. Um, and the only people that haven't had dental work are going to be the very young. I mean, if, if you have somebody over 40, forget about it. That there's maybe one in a hundred, not many. Amazing. So are there in, is there anything that we didn't really cover today in, in this interview? Cause this is a big topic. And I, I went on a lot of different areas I thought were really important. Um, is there anything that I didn't touch on or that we need to kind of um, summarize up? Well, uh, I think one thing that's worth touching base on, we alluded to it, we touched on it briefly, but there was so much, we just went by it fast is I think, physicians and the general public needs to understand what causes disease, what causes all disease, 100% of disease, I, you name it, I don't care which disease it is, the affected tissue has increased oxidative stress. What does that mean? That means more biomolecules RNA, DNA, protein, sugars, enzymes are oxidized in an electron depleted, non-functioning state than in a normal tissue. So the only thing that determines whether a tissue is diseased is by the numbers of biomolecules that are oxidized. There is no other disease going on, say in an Alzheimer's cell versus a fibromyalgia cell than the distribution and degree and extent of which biomolecules are oxidized. That's the entirety of the disease. Is oxid In other words, oxidation doesn't cause disease. Oxidation is disease. Seemingly subtle, but very important point. Oxidation is disease. Now, all toxins are toxic because they oxidize. They're all pro-oxidant. You say, you say toxin, pro-oxidant, free radical, radical uh, reactive oxygen species, poison, they're all the same. They're all the same because they oxidize. So why, if all disease is oxidation and toxins are toxic because they oxidize, why do different toxins cause different diseases? It's because the physical nature of a toxin, fat soluble, water soluble, ionic, large, small, determines where they go and where they get taken up. That determines which biomolecules they oxidize, and that determines whether you have a toxin that kills you in a minute or makes you sick for 30 years. 
Cyanide goes directly into the respiratory chain and almost immediately because of the enzymes that it oxidizes, makes it poss impossible for you to assimilate oxygen. So you die of oxygen starvation in a minute or two. On the other hand, you could poison yourself with mercury for 20 or 30 years from the mercury amalgams, but it accumulates in the brain until you finally get your multiple sclerosis. But they all cause disease because of oxidation and oxidation is all disease. And that brings us to the other theme that I was talking about, which is why we've talked about chronic path pathogen colonization. Most commonly that's in your nose, throat. That's where you find it all the time. But it's my thesis. And I have at least eight or nine different disease processes to cite that is true, although all diseases have not been tested in this manner. It's my thesis that all chronic diseases have some chronic pathogen colonization in the affected tissue. And that's why good antioxidants can't completely reverse the disease because you're getting too much prooxidant toxin in excess of that. It's as my good mentor, Dr. Huggins said a long time ago, he was frustrated with me one day when I was asking questions and he just sort of snorted and said, Tom, I said, yes, sir. <laughs> he said, you can't dry off while you're still in the shower. And it's true. You can't resolve disease until you resolve what's continuing to cause the disease on a as the young people say, 24 seven basis, okay? So it, it, <clears throat> this brings us to the other point that if for the sake of argument, you have some acute disease and there's no infection involved with it, no chronic infection, and you have some residual damage, you can expect that vigorous antioxidant therapy will completely resolve it because you don't have anything continuing to contribute <clears throat> new oxidation on a daily basis. So it's very important to realize that you don't have Alzheimer's cells, fibromyalgia cells, uh, heart disease cells. They all share the common pathology. They just share different distributions, different types of biomolecules, different concentrations, and different durations of oxidation that determines the disease. And this makes it very clear then, at least to me, and I try to bring this out, is you have two then factors to resolving disease, curing disease. You resolve old oxidative damage and you prevent new oxidative damage, quite simply. Modern medicine, quote unquote, doesn't do either one. Okay, they make no effort at all or no understanding at all that pathogens and toxins are continuing to cause problems. And they don't do anything with prescription drugs to repair oxidized biomolecules. So they do neither one. I mean, they might relieve a symptom while letting the disease roar on and continue. Integrative medicine, orthomolecular medicine, for the most part, just does repair. Although finally, in the past few years, more of orthomolecular medicine, integrated medicine, alternative medicine, I hate the phrase, uh, is starting to recognize the importance, really, of chronic infections. I mean, when I talk about oxidative stress coming into the body on a 24-7 basis, I will tell you straight up front, 95% of the time is coming from oral cavity toxicity. The other 5%, you might have infected bladder, infected somewhere on your skin, some focal infection in your gallbladder, in your uterus, in your gut, this out of the other. And if you're in that 5%, well, then that needs to be addressed. But for the vast majority of the population, you completely resolve the mouth and you take care of CPC in the airways and in the nose and throat good quality uh, antioxidants, you'll stabilize everything. And then, and this is in the book too, if you take a strong proactive, pro-oxidant, um, bio-oxidative therapies, which is uh, vitamin C, hydrogen peroxide, ozone, 
hyperbaric oxygen therapy and ultraviolet blood irradiation. And you hit really hard with that, all of those will break down biofilm and you're not going to resolve the chronic pathogens growing in tissues until you knock out the biofilm. But if you come in, knock out the biofilm and then nuke the bugs and you don't have anything going on in your mouth to reseed that all over again, you can actually cure uh, most chronic degenerative diseases. But you're not seeing that yet because nobody's doing the whole package. Absolutely. Well, I, I'd love for folks out there to tell, so you can tell them again where we can find the book um, as well. Uh, if you don't want to write me an email and go straight to the book, that's fine. It's a simple link. It's, it's RVR. That stands for Rapid Virus Recovery. R-V-R dot med, M-E-D-F-O-X-P-U-B, medfoxpub.com. R-V-R dot medfoxpub.com. And if you just want to remember my email, that's fine. It's my initials, T-E, Thomas Edward, last name Levy, L-E-V-Y. That's V as in Victor. That's not a B. So T-E-L-E-V-Y-M-D at yahoo.com. And I can give you the link not only for that book, but also for the other one that's going to talk about all these dental issues. Sounds great. And we'll put the links down in the show notes so people can just easily click on them and get in contact. I'll just tell you, it was such a pleasure today. Thank you so much for being here. And I, I love your books. I just love what you have written and how much you time you have taken to research. It's just been truly an inspiration. So thank okay. you for doing well, thank that. Thank you for having me on and let me try to get the message out. And everybody needs to get the book because I guarantee you, if enough people have it, so far 110,000 have it, we can stop the pandemic around the world. <laughs> thank goodness. Thank you for listening to the Gut Health Reset Podcast. Please make sure you subscribe, leave a rating and a review so more people can hear about the podcast. And hey, take a screenshot of this episode and tag Dr. Anne Marie on Instagram or Facebook at Dr. Anne Marie Barter. And for more resources, just visit DrAnneMarieBarter.com.